Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to introduce Gornaya Shoria to you. You may have seen it in some other videos. That's what surprised me was how big these megaliths really were. We can go through the Gornaya Shoria photo collection that I have. And that would be right about here. How do you say it? Gornaya Shoria. Gornaya Shoria. Gornaya Shoria. Okay, I was looking at... Uh, the Inca Road, and what do I see? I heard that the Inca Road was polygonal, but as you can see, you still have this more inferior style of construction. Let's see who's uh, watching the stream right now. I have a lot of information about, is that me? Is that me watching? Hold on, let me uh, log in and see if there's a chat. Let's see who's uh, watching. Okay, so anyways, uh, welcome and thank you for your thumbs up. The Inca Road does have polygonal type of shapes, but I wouldn't call that polygonal megalithic stones. Now, I am interested in the Inca Trail because it is very long, and it's longer than the Chinese, the, the, wall, the Great Wall of China. So uh, I did want to mention that road. But this is uh, the thing that I just found here. It's a topographical interface, and I'll show you that in a moment. First, let me finish the Gornaya Shoria photos. Those are located here. Gornaya Shoria. Gornaya Shoria is located right about there. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's the leaner pillars. I, I did combine some other photos in this folder. Leaner pillars, this is Gornaya Shoria. That, to me, in my humble opinion, doesn't look man-made, but that certainly does. So what we're looking at, if that other one was man-made, that's the implication, then it is quite large. The location is near uh, Siberia. To me, that doesn't look that man-made, but at the same time, I'd like to see another perspective. That certainly does look man-made. And definitely, uh, here, this is where I originally heard of it from this video here, and I cut off the person, but the title, Gornaya Shoria, the largest man-moved stones on Earth, question mark. And that's quite an interesting thing, and you can still see the knobs sticking through. Just like the Great Pyramids and just like Peru, Gornaya Shoria is in Russia. It's actually north of me. This is quite a large stone, and that's a door cut out of the stone. So we've got megalithic and some of the largest stones. Some of the largest stones. Again, I cut off the title, but you can see the you can see this the YouTube address right there if you want to go there yourself. I think you should just look up the title, Gornaya Shoria, the largest man moved stones on earth, question mark. And you can see the ability. And uh, there's some other stuff that I, I didn't prepare, but I did want to get this on record, Gornaya Shoria. Okay, this, is, uh, this might give you a hint. I grabbed a screenshot. Do I think that's man-made? It doesn't look man-made because I live near Joshua Tree. Right here, this... If that's like some type of connection to man-made, uh, it's incredible. It really is. But the other stuff is very incredible, too. Why does this always bother me? I thought I got rid of that. I thought I got rid of that. Okay. Let's continue. Here's the thumbnail photo. That's definitely man-made, right? The implications is this is man-made. 90 degrees. Now, here's the picture that caught my attention the most, and this is why I did that Bimini Road video, because to me, this looks like the same type of Bimini Road layout. Now, if it's Bimini Road underwater, it's got to be eroded by wind first. This is wind erosion if it's real, if it's not man-made. Even if it is man-made, that's wind erosion. This is very old, 20,000 maybe 30,000 years old. 
if the implication is that mountain is man-made, then it's 40,000 years old. But that's the big difference between megalithic. How far back does megalithic stone go? I'm going to have to find out if somebody can hear me. I feel like nobody can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Even if you can't hear me, we can still go through these pictures. I mean, that looks man-made right there. And the reason why is the layers. The layers. They're like they filled it in and then put something on top. They're doing brickwork, masonry work. Thank you, Tommy. All right. Well, back to speaking, and I won't talk too much longer about this. I, I just discovered this, the Ganora Shoria megaliths. What is a megalith? It's a man-made block, prehistoric, gigantic megaliths. And that's what got my attention. I don't know what's happening here. It's like the vagina rock or something. I, if that's rock, it's part of the collection. Now, this is the uh, other one, the Lena Pillars thing. That's showing the area outside the river delta. That river delta looks like a man-made structure. Now, this is back to Ganora Shoria. Ganora, now, Ganaya Shoria is a little bit farther west from the Lena pillars, but what you're seeing here is the, the way they changed the stone. Some type of a machining, ancient machining on this uh, megalith. And I'm going to have another picture of something, same with uh, Egypt. Now, is this man-made? It, I can't really say that that's man-made, except for those lines there. I mean, that kind of gives me one sign of man-made. I'd have to know the, the measurements, really. But when you're cutting up stone, megalithic stone, is that a is that a man-made structure? It really looks right here that looks man-made, but in general it looks if, if it is man-made it's very old. 20,000, 30,000 years old. And I give you those numbers because in general I think that pre um younger drier event these civilizations had to be around for about 10,000 years. How would, would they get so old? I mean, do they learn how to make pyramids? I believe the pyramids are older than 10,000 years old. And you see the casing stone on the pyramids matches the ones in Peru, matches these megalithic stones here. This is Lena Pillars. This is another thing. Somebody insisted this was not real. I think it's got to be natural. Why would somebody create that? But at the same time, it does show some consistent uh, equal lines and amounts, symmetry in a way. Is that man-made? I wouldn't bet that this is man-made. This is the Lena Pillars, or Lensky Stolby, this Lena River. And this is the Gnoria Shoria mountaintop area. And they're both very close. Here's Gnora Shoria here. I'm in Taiwan. And that other location is actually east of Taiwan. So believe it or not, that other location is way over here. They're very far apart. And there's that right there. There's the location I was talking about. That's actually east of Taiwan, believe it or not. Okay, so that's it. I just wanted to get a video online, but now I want to talk about this topographical. I do have some other folders that I could talk about very quickly uh, going through. There's the Gunang Padang. I showed that picture already, so I'm not going to show it now. Those pregnant woman. Okay, so this thing is originally thought of as one of the largest monoliths that are man-made. But the guy that did this video and the guy that added these words he actually um, questioned this big, huge piece of stone right below it. It's wider and taller than the pregnant woman, which is right there next to it. That's the pregnant woman. So why focus on this when the bigger one's right below? But when you look at the 
other one, the ones I just showed you in Russia, you can see that this is just a, a single stone compared to so many. And it still is pretty big. No lie about that. But don't forget China quarry, Yangshan, China. Now this picture here, it shows some really large stones that were carved. This is the channel that I got that from. I want to give, give due credit, but I'm trying to collect this stuff pretty quick. <clears throat> uh, going back to my folders, I have one more. It was just a quick uh, Bimini Road. I didn't show all the pictures, the last video that I wanted to show. The Inca Road is quite large. I'll show you a quick map of the system. As you can see, it goes all the way from Colombia down to the lower end of Ar uh, Argentina and Chile. And actually, it gets a little bit more intricate than that. There it is. Look at all that. Those connections there. So along the shore and then into the mountains as well. It's quite long and intricate. So it is definitely important to note. But... Was that created in the last 10,000 years? I think it could have been. I mean, the Incans were done in the year 1500. So the idea that their civilization wasn't around 10,000 years ago, it's probably uh, a previous civilization doing megalithic stuff. Okay, going back to uh, the other folder that I was going to talk about was one last one. Well, okay. Just very quickly, so we can see it, it's this picture here. That's not a very high res. Right next to the Sphinx. I've talked about this so many times, I'm not going to get into the Sphinx. The Sphinx could have been carved from something like that, which is called a promontory. It's a, but look at these casing stones here at the bottom of the pyramid. Now, those have the same nubs that you see in Peru. This is the megalithic stonework that is a lost trade in art. This is what I'm seeking most of all. And when you get to this type of stonework, you just don't see it on the Inca Trail. The next one here shows a couple of other uh, pieces of the stonework here. The knobs. Now, I mean, you can see this is not really poly polygonal, you know, that type of work. And I think I have some thumbnails here of it, right? Where is it? Not there? Here? Right there? No? Yes? You can see a big difference. Now, these types of polygonal stonework is seen around the world. The Inca Trail, I would rather... Um, listen to Brian Forrester talk about that a little more because I have a lot to learn about the Inca Trail, but it's definitely more of an inferior stone. When you see stonework like this, you know it's not exactly the same as stonework like this, which does exist in Peru. So I'm very interested in going there soon, someday. Thank you very much for your visit. Let's see, I got a bunch of other stuff to show you. Maybe I have a couple more photos the Sphinx, I'm finished with that. There was one mother, uh, where was that? I did have a UFO photo I wanted to show you. <clears throat> and uh, the UFO that I wanted to show you has this light on both sides of it. Now that made me wonder, but it could have been edited in. So that, that, that UFO has the light that blinks here and then it blinks here. Who added that? Did someone add that or is that the real thing? That's an old picture from 2015. I did want to try to get that on my channel, and I do have an earlier video. But that's about it. I did look at the Bronze Age a little bit because I'm interested in the metals and what defines the Bronze Age. But I do believe that the Bronze Age is definitely – oh, yeah, I know what I can show you next. The Bronze Age is definitely uh, missing a lot of stuff. <clears throat> okay, I better start out by closing all these photographs. So this type of megalithic stonework, I was looking for that in the Rashad structure. The Rashad structure, 
doesn't really have that either, does it? But what the Rashad structure does have, the, okay, let's take a look. So here's the Inca road. And I'm looking at the stonework and I, and I heard, oh, Inca road's got polygonal stonework. Well, where is it? I want to see some photographs of that. So I'm still waiting for that. But it is quite beautiful. I'd like to walk on that. But as far as being a polygonal megalithic structure, I don't think so. Uh, not yet. So far, I haven't seen that. But it is definitely uh, got a lot of technology involved that we don't usually see. And so it's not something to be ignored. These are just some pictures that I uh, harvested from a couple of videos because I want to learn as much as possible about uh, this for a future video. This is actually the Rashad structure. The Rashad structure, the Andrar Mountains, these video, these, uh, this guy rode his bike several kilometers through that. His name is uh, Audric Laverdier. And uh, I thought it was quite interesting because – I was just looking at this area on the topographical map to see if any water could get through. And look, we've got ourselves some oases and where people live in the street view. Well, don't call it a street view. It's more of a, one of those 360-degree uh, 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 photographs. We've got Chinguetti. I was looking over here by Aljef Department. And that department is right next to these ancient rivers that could have cut through. And I'll explain what I'm talking about. Right there is the 21-kilometer canal that goes through from one side of the mountain to the other. Now, that's the mountain ridge right there, and that's exactly where I'm going to talk about. 21.28 kilometers from here to here. That's 20 kilometers. And I'll show you in a minute. But I want you to realize this is what you're looking at when you're standing there. So when you talk about living in this neighborhood, you're talking about living in the desert. You're not seeing the concentric circles from the ground. You know, the Inca Trail. Okay, I'm finished with these pictures. These, Where's the pictures I want to show you? I had a couple of other photos. Oh, they must have been in my download photo. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so um, I have some photos here. Look at that. There's my thumbnail how did that happen so the thumbnails here but we look at that same canal that i mentioned uh, just a moment ago i mentioned this canal i said it's 20 kilometers long but look how it bumps into the mountains here that's 2500 feet the white is 2500 the rose and the pink is 23 24 22 sorry so when you get down to this yellow here, that's 13. So there's a big chunk of difference right there. That river is just going into directly into a mountain. Okay, so is it really originating there, a straight line straight out of the mountain? Because that's what makes it. It is part of the current day river system, but down here you've got that long piece that's not used anymore. And it's full of sand, and then it goes down to a cut-through area that gets you out to the ocean. Now I'm going to go through these really quick. Okay, Michelle made that. I made this. This is this land. Okay, so here we have the blue part. That goes straight to the ocean. And then it goes into the mountains. You've got the straight line that goes straight into the, the mountains, about 40, 50 kilometers. You've got a ridge here. So there's this line on this side, and then you've got that ridge. And you get to this city called Aujuet. 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 Oh, Jeff, oh, Jeff, I don't know. And then you've got these two rivers that go straight towards the uh, Rashad structure. But you've got this mountain ridge kind of blocking off the south side. And you can go up here this way. There's a lake here. There's river here. 20,000 years ago, this was a complex of different rivers. Okay, going the wrong way. Here you can see the whole thing. There's Chinguetti. That's the lower left corner eye of the Rashad structure. Unless you're talking about just the concentric circles, then I'm talking about the whole mountain ridge. And if you're coming down here, it's clear cut open river. So getting around there 20,000 years ago by river was probably not a problem. If that was like the, uh, as, as uh, Chris Tolworthy says, like the Nile or like a large enough river that it was like a kilometer across, 
Well, then it would have definitely reached up here and it would have had water coming from this direction. I believe that was a major river. It still is a river, but I believe it was a bigger river. Now, the question about how it gets around to Chinggedi, that's a whole different story. And it actually goes along the north side all the way up here to Michelle's perfect circle and a canal that cuts around and goes down the other side. This is a dam. These are dams. I made a mistake when I told you they're canals. They're dams and they're waterways. The one other one that I said is right here that looks like the California aqueduct, I still think that could be a waterway that came around. I'd still like to take a good look at that because if it's a dam, the lighting on it looks really weird. See, I had a reverse idea. This is actually 900 feet above sea level here, whereas the red is twice as high. It's called El Galoya. El Galoya. El Galoya has a couple dam structures here. And if you follow it down the north side of the, of the eye, the Rashad structure, you find several other modern day dams. So that river, that was definitely a river. But the question is on the south side, how do you get from Chinggedi? And by the way, here's the river here. So there is a river, but that goes up into the mountain and it doesn't go anywhere. So how do you get from this mountain to over here to the other side? And you can definitely follow it down this way on the right and get to what I call the Senegal River Complex. But you've got this 20 kilometer canal. How do you get from that to the other side? Here it is here. You can see the real picture. The river would have gone this way, down here by Adrev Department. And then you've got this canal here, so you can easily follow. There's a river this way. There's a river that goes right up here. There's a river that goes right up here. So I think it's this one. It goes right up to this, meets it, and then you get up here. Now, that's the question. How do you get to the other side of the mountain? Yeah, that's something Michelle made. I, I didn't want to talk about that. Here's another picture of it, and here you can really see the mountaintop. There's not snow on there, but you can see that there's definitely a uh, hard to pass. How's water going to get from one side to the other in a canal? This is your only chance right here. A little tiny. <clears throat> I followed it up there, right where I showed you. Now the canal I actually might not be right here. Uh, I got a. That was a kind of a raw, but what it does show is the picture of the real riverways that exist today on the other side waiting. Something Michelle made, but the dam over here, by that's her circle right there, by the way. That's her concentric circle because we've got this concentric circle, and then you've got this. If you follow it straight up, you've got a circle that basically dissects this circle. And then down here, you've got a couple of other, you've got a river. These are real, this is Michelle's graphic. This is a real waterway. These are real waterways. She's pointing right at the spot I'm talking about. How did it get past there? And that's the ocean. Now, there are these dams here. Actually, that belongs here, and there's two more. And it's actually a lot smaller. But that follows the north side down to the ocean. No problem. So 20,000 years ago, this was a river, and it went all the way up to the top. And then now there's a canal here that you can see in the other picture. And now all the sand is covering up any canals that came down to here. But you still had a waterway going down to the ocean. The big question is, and by the way, that one that she was pointing, it's over here because there are rivers over here. But this is probably the shortest distance between two points to get to Chinggedi. So maybe there was a canal right there. Or maybe it linked over to the north too. Maybe there was a northern side. We're talking about pre-desert, lots of different types of jungle and forest and rain, enough to make the Sphinx on the other side of the Sahara Desert get all that weathering, all that precipitation style weathering that Robert Schock proved and Brian Forrester's geology friend claims that it's 30,000 years old, and I tend to believe it, but I do have some reservations. 30,000? Sure. Why not? Because the Atlanteans, the people of Atlantis, if they're going to be so developed before the cataclysmic event 13,000 years ago, then they definitely were around 10,000 years before that. 
So 20,000 years ago, I believe it's easily another 10,000 for some of these megalithic structures are found around the world. How they could get from this part of Chinggedi over this mountain is a question to me. I have a lot of questions about that. But you can see that there are existing riverways that could have, look at that, that could have connected. I know, you say, how can it connect over a big mountain? Well, we actually have one that exists today. And I'll show you that later. <clears throat> this is a dam that's over by the Michelle Circle. I think this is Michelle's circle. Now, if I'm wrong, then this is another circle that Michelle found. I forgot where that one is, but if that's, I don't think that's the same circle. Michelle finds circles. Here's a, another picture Michelle found of a straight line that goes across this mountain structure. So which is older, these ancient decaying mountain skeletons or this line here that's going straight across it? Okay, uh, that's it. I showed you everything. The last thing we can do is we can play with the, uh, let me close that. Oops, I just, oh, I didn't want to close that. Oh, well, helps me focus on my day. Oh, you know what? Where is it? It's here. This thing. You can try it yourself and go to this en.us.topographic-map.com. Here's the Rashad structure right here. I don't have any way of maximizing it, so... I can just kind of center it there. Here's Mauritania. <clears throat> There's the Rashad structure right there. Yeah, my internet connection is being much more forgiving. I'm surprised I don't have any comments um, and or likes, but I'm almost done with this video. I can say one last thing, and I always wait till it's too late, don't I? But if I look at the pictures I have here, you can see I have... The two books that I promise to give to my Patreon supporters or anybody who super chats me. These books are talking about a couple of my jobs. Life in pa Taipei during SARS. The Oil Sands of Alberta, they're using a pseudonym. I'll send them anywhere in the world to my first super chatter or my first Patreon subscriber of significance. See, here you can see how the colors change depending on your altitude. I can even make this a little bigger, but I don't want to make it too much bigger because it'll lose certain parts of it, but that's about it. You can see the very top color is usually white, and it shows the highest altitude in the frame at the time. Now, I can click in here, and I can turn on Thunder Forest Landscape. It's got all sorts of different setting. It's really cool. S3 topographical, it shows meters, it shows the higher points right there, 600 meters. So this 2,000 2, feet is about 652 meters. And as you move it over, you can see the topographical lines appear, and you can see the meters and topographical stuff. So it's kind of tricky, and I wish I could make the, the, the colored topographical disappear sometime. So it doesn't get too close. You can't get too close. But what I was talking about earlier is the river that cuts through between these two portions. You've got right here a river. See, and it also jumps around a lot. You've got to kind of be patient with it. All right, here we are. Ah, one more time, right? One more time. So there we go right there. Yeah, keep moving. Keep bumping around. Frustrating. Okay. Oh, see, you can see the line that Michelle wrote right there. There's like a dam right there. That's is that natural? It's like a it's it's kind of like a natural dam. And it's what's the difference between that and that? You've got the yellow is 1253. It's 1322 because it's almost orange. And then you've got the red. What is that? 17. So you're talking about 500 foot difference. You've got a river here. There's a river that goes up that way. But here you've got a river that goes from the north side to the south side. So they could have had a canal right here long ago. If this place was really hit, this is a good place to study to see if there's an ancient canal cutting through here to here. Because it's the real shortest distance between two points, if you know what I mean. 
we're talking about almost five kilometers. That's a lot of difference between the 20 kilometer line that I was talking about down here, which I can see from here. Now my inch in the legend is 50 kilometers. So you're talking about that's 50 kilometers. Well, what's shorter? That's five kilometers or that uh, what I kind of would say is more like 20 to 40, 50 kilometers. Have a nice day. I didn't want to talk about stuff too long. Last chance to make a comment or ask me a live question. I'll just stumble around while you're talking. Definitely a north river along this edge here. Everywhere you see yellow, there was a river. Easy to believe 20,000 years ago, you see plenty of riverbeds that go all the way up here. You see plenty of different canal structures around here. You can zoom in and see that this river here, that's a road, sorry. I was looking for a canal structure that I was looking at before. There's a lot of tumuli on there. If you don't know what that is, go check out my other videos, Tumulus. There's cut-throughs and canals right there. This is 800 meters, okay? This is some of the highest mountains, but you've also got some of the lowest crevices. A thousand feet difference. Definitely waterways. Okay, I got to go find a good. Uh, by the way, this has got, definitely got a two topic matter. If you tuned in for the, uh, what's it called? And by the way, this is me. Don't catch me looking at you. Have a good day. I'm out of here. Yeah, good night, Ashoria. That's definitely the uh, title of this video, but we got into some more Rashat topography, and uh, I'm going to put both of those in the title so I can find it later. Have a nice day. See you next time. Peace.